Hello everyone and welcome back. We are building a website that can do everything and today we're going to be integrating Code Django's idea which is creating an API using Django REST framework and integrating it with Vue 3. So thanks for leaving the comment and guys don't forget to leave your suggestions for the next feature in the comment section below. Okay I guess we can get started now. So we're in the root directory of our project where I've managed our Pi is, I've activated our virtual environment and what we're going to do now is set up our front end using Vue.js. Okay let's look at the official documentation for Vue.js and it says the way we actually get started with a project is using this npm create view at latest and we just type in this command. So we want it to just be called front end, uh, add typescript no, JSX support, no. Uh, I do want the router, just because it can be useful. Um, no, no, no. Lovely, so we now go into the front end and we run npm install. That might take a second. Okay, all we now need to do is run npm run dev. Lovely, you did it. So we've successfully set up our Vue.js project. Now we need something to interact with the backend. And for that, we're going to be using Axios because it's the only uh, tool I've used to actually interact with uh, a backend. Paste that in. Lovely. We've got our front end set up using Vue.js and Vite. Uh, we've installed Axios, which is a client that will allow us to interact with our backend. And now we just need to set up the backend, um, by which I mean a way for us to create an API and we're going to be using Django REST framework for that. Okay so all we need to do is pip install Django REST framework but all we need to do is pop that in our requirements.in file then go back to our terminal make sure we're in the right directory uh, then we do pip compile. So again all this is going to do is find a version of Django REST framework that's going to work with everything else so we don't break anything and then we just need to do pip sync which is basically going to uh, install whatever we need. So like most Django packages, we actually now need to add this REST framework to our settings file. Uh, where is it? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a new app called API. I think that makes sense. We've got our main app, we've got a folder for our front end, and we've got an API. So same drill as before, I'm just going to tidy these up and put them all in folders. So all we've done is create three folders, models, tests, and views. And then we've just moved these respective files into those folders. And we also created these init files. Uh, admin and apps.py I've left as is because I don't think we actually benefit from having those in folders, uh, even though I did that in the first video. So what I've done now is in our settings file, I've included the API config for the app we just created. Uh, so that's in api.apps.apiconfig. Uh, and remember the reason this is two apps is because I actually put this inside a folder called apps and the file is also called apps. Whereas in this case, we've just got the apps file inside the API app. Another thing I forgot, which I've just added is to create the urls.py file in our API. And I also created a serializers folder because that's kind of the key difference, well, one of the key differences between Django and Django REST framework. Now, unfortunately, again, we haven't really specified what we're building with this, so I'm just going to have to improvise a little bit with something basic. So what I've done is I've created a model called task, and this model is in our API app rather than our main app. Technically, I think we could have just our model uh, in the main app, but I'd, I think that would get confusing. Like going forwards, we want to know that this model is actually part of this API app. So let's put that there. Okay, same as always then, we want to import that model into our init file. I'd actually made a mistake. Uh, I accidentally was importing the model into this init file rather than the one inside models, which is the correct way to do it. And on top of that, I was importing it from the models file rather than this task file that I created. Uh, so it should all be fixed now. Oops, there was one more error. This was lowercase rather than uppercase, which I fixed. Lovely, we were finally able to make the migrations and then migrate that model. We've created our serializer and we've imported it into our init file. Okay, we've created a simple view for our API uh, using view sets because I prefer to use view sets personally. Uh, and again, in the init file. In fact, I'm just gonna stop mentioning the init file, just assume I'm always gonna be doing that. Okay, we've done a couple of things now. We've updated our URLs file in the API app um, to look like this. So we're basically going to be viewing our task view set add forward slash tasks and in addition we've updated the root url to have an api path so the way we access this is going to be forward slash api forward slash tasks so i guess we should now see if this actually works so python manage.py run server seems to be okay and we want to go forward slash api and then we want to go forward slash tasks 
And there you go, we've got our API root. Now we're not displaying anything because we've not created any models or anything, or any, sorry, any data entries in that model. I actually want to load some data into this model, so I've actually gone ahead and registered it for the admin page, which we can take a look at in a second. So we can see we've got three apps now. We've got the default authentication and authorization one, we've got the main one that we created with our to-dos, and we've got this API one, uh, which we just created with tasks in it, and there's no task in there. Uh, title, do something, description, we need to do something. We can save that, and we can go back here, and then if we click here, then we get all of the tasks that we have in our database. So we're not quite done yet. Of course, we've created all the backend stuff we need to do. Uh, and now we need to modify our front end. And I'm just going to modify this about page. And we're just basically going to try and make a request to our back end and display uh, this task. Okay, because I've done this before, I know we're probably going to need Django Core's headers because we're going to be making a request from a different port. Uh, so we're going to want to install that. So we go to our terminal and we do pip compile. And then we do, you know, pip sync. And then we include that now in here. And then we need to update our middleware also, like this. Then we're going to add a couple of settings. The cores allow all origins, which we've put to false, so not. You can't just make a request from anywhere, but anywhere we specify. And then we've allowed this origin, which is where our front end is currently uh, at. Okay, so the last step was just to create a bit of Vue.js code. All we're doing is we've got a little button, and when we click that button, we make a request for the data. Uh, I actually had this wrong, I had a API forward slash tasks, but obviously like when I clicked on it, it needed to be API tasks forward slash tasks. Uh, so I can actually get rid of this console log, I was just debugging. Uh, but yeah, so we're just fetching this data. And again, this is just the about view, so I haven't really changed much except for install Axios as we saw. And then we're just displaying it. So if we go back to our browser, this is what it looks like. Um, I've kept the original styling. So we just do fetch tasks, obviously nothing's going to happen. But if we go back to our model here, and we add a task, doesn't really matter what. And we save that. And theoretically, when we make this request, then we get the next task. So I'm pretty happy with that. We've done exactly what was asked, which was to integrate Vue.js 3 with um, Django which we've done. So don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff, and please leave a feature request for the next video that we can work on and keep going with the series where we're building a horrible website.